get uh, copies when when it's yes, done. Yes, of course. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, so uh, the first case study um, is about um, a hydrate um, blockage in a gas injection facilities. Um, so before that, sorry, I forgot. Um, uh, let me give you an, an, a brief introduction to HydroFlash. Uh, this is the main window of HydroFlash. We have uh, the main ribbon here, which all calculation modules can be accessed from here. We have settings, help, database management, and fluid management. So in fluid management, um, you can create fluids, characterize fluids. And in database management, we can import and create databases. Uh, in HydroFlash, we use databases because it, it helps user to, organ, to be more organized uh, when they are doing the modeling and calculations. And then they, have, they, they can have all, everything like in a database and uh, it will help them to, to, to sort the calculations and they have all the compositions in different databases. Uh, well, calculation tab, you have all these um, calculation modules here. Um, they are separated by flash calculations, hydrate calculations, asphaltine modeling, wax modeling, and saturation properties calculations, and other uh, miscellaneous um, options like mixing fluids or SLE CO2. And settings with calculation preferences, unit preferences, and uh, finally, hydro flash help. So this is the main ribbon. We call it upper ribbon. And so the next section is this section, which uh, at the moment you're you are seeing as a basic guide on how to use HydroFlash. Um, I can close this one. Um, so the results of the calculation will be shown in this section, the, the biggest um, rectangle here. And the calculation options and features will be shown in this section, in this parameter. User is, uh, is able to change the equation of state, everything, even units um, from here. So everything is, is quite handy and um, um, it's, uh, it's been designed to be user- Good morning, Ramin. Hi, yeah. Um, we, we can only see your PDF. We can't see the- um, All right, okay, okay. Right. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> right. Um, so can you see it now? No, just the PDF. Just the PDF. Yes, can see it now. I can see it now. What about now? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So good. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, uh, let me. Um, okay. So uh, as I was saying, we, uh, in HydroFlash, we have three main sections, the upper ribbon, which all calculation modules, um, database management options, um, fluid management options, uh, also uh, unit preferences, uh, calculation preferences, or HydroFlash help, they're available in this section. And the second section is uh, this, this result section area, which uh, you will be see the results graph everything in this area. And then uh, the calculation options and features will be shown uh, in this section. And also you're able to, um, to choose the equation of the states, um, calculation, uh, mixing rules, uh, all these uh, options and supplementary uh, features in, in this, in this uh, tab. And if you want to change the units of any parameters, you can, you can change it here. And um, so you, you will see how these, these um, options will be appear as soon as we change the calculation module. Okay, so let's go to the, um, um, the course problem. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you all have the, 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 the PDF of the high depth flow assurance modeling course problems. So the first case study is, um, is a dried uh, lift gas uh, which is assumed after gas processing dehydration or sweetening is being injected to the wells from a ring pipeline. This ring pipeline here, which uh, operates as, at 20 degrees and 130 bar. However, 
uh, in the case of gas processing failure, uh, compressor failure or, or anything else, raw gas from a high pressure gas reservoir is directly injected to the wells to avoid production interruption. So imagine if, if so before here we have a gas uh, dehydration unit and if the, 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 the process unit fails or stop working for any reason, then they inject uh, um, the, the gas, the, the, the raw gas from com exact, coming from the reservoir uh, to this pipeline to, to avoid the, the production interruption. Obviously, the raw gas has water in it, which can result in hydrate formation. Tech is being used for gas dehydration. The client is planning to use tech for hydrate inhibition when the raw gas is being used for lift. However, based on pump, pump capacity and tech viscosity, it is only possible to inject, <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> inject only 15 liter per million uh, cubic standard food. Um, so it's, it's only 15 liter of, of take. And the layout of the gas injection facility is, is being shown here. One of you want to explain yeah. something? <coughs> yeah. Uh, I should um, thank uh, Rami because he's not, you know, very well. He was off sick yesterday uh, and um, came because of this course, he's not 100% today. He came to uh, deliver this course. And uh, as Rami was explaining, we have several wells, gas wells, that are producing gas. And this, uh, normally we don't have take, take injection here because uh, they are producing gas and gas goes to the gas processing unit which is dehydrated. The gas is dehydrated. So this bypass is closed. Normally gas goes to the um, processing unit and dehydrated. And the dry gas is injected for the gas lift for other wells. There are another field that this gas, this dry gas comes to the ring pipeline and injected to different wells for producing from another reservoir, a low, low pressure reservoir. Obviously, there can, things can go wrong in the processing unit, and it is possible that compressor doesn't work, or, so they cannot supply this dry gas. So they cannot stop uh, production here, from this well, so they will, they have to bypass the um, gas processing unit and inject the wet gas because the gas which is being produced from this reservoir is in contact with the water, so the gas is wet. And they use here in gas processing unit, they use tech for dehydration of the gas. So the consultant has told them that they can use tech and, and what is available, because tech is a bit more viscous, uh, is the capacity is 15 liter per million cubic, standard cubic uh, foot. So, then they, in, they open up this injection valve and inject the wet gas with tech and it goes through this bypass and goes to the ring gas here and goes to the, to the, um, to the well. So ring gas condition um, is 20 degrees um, and 130 bar. But after the um, choke valve, because we need <coughs> choke valves to control flow to each uh, lift gas. So that temperature is calculated to be <coughs> minus 5.75 at pressure of 60 bar. So that's the situation. And they were hoping that this amount of may and uh, take that they have is good enough 
to prevent hydrate formation in the ring bypass uh, ring uh, system <coughs> and also in the condition at the condition after the control. So now we see that what's going to happen. So I'll leave it to Rami. Um, yes. Okay, uh, so thank you, Bahman. Um, so the, the, the conditions of the reservoir is um, reservoir is at 100 degrees and 170 bar. The pressure is 170 bar and the salinity of the formation water is um, 24, um, no, 245,000 ppm uh, of, and we assume that it's uh, sodium chloride. Um, so the composition of the of the lift gas is uh, presented in this in this table. Um, so the question is 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 the current as Bahman explained is the current take injection rate adequate to uh, prevent hydrate formation? If not, what are the uh, other available options? So the, to start the um, solution, do you have any any question about about the problem? Is it is it clear? So these are the production um, lines, and this is the gas processing, and this is the ring, ring pipeline, and there, these are um, injection lines. And so we are we, we want to know with this much of uh, tag injection, we can prevent hydrate formation in the ring pipeline. Okay. Um, so uh, first, uh, create a database and name it properly using the composition of the gas lift. Make a composition and name it lift gas and um, add the lift gas composition, uh, 200,000 ppm of water to the composition. We add this amount of water to, to the system to make sure that enough water will be present in the system for hydrate formation. Okay, so let's go to HydroFlash. And uh, we want to first create a database. I go to database management tab here, press K database and I name it um September course. I save it on my desktop and says me it is active now. So now I can I can make um uh create fluids or you see that all these calculation modules that are now enabled. Um so but we are, we cannot use it because we don't have any active composition. So we need to first create a composition. I have prepared the um, composition um, in this Excel file so we can be faster. Um, see, the, the, this is um, one of the um, features of software. So if, if we have the, the composition here, like in an Excel file with the name of the components and the more fractions here, so we can, we can copy this these two columns, and then we can go to HydroFlash and then open a create um, a menu, and then right click here, paste name and mold fraction. Um, we leave these um, options as they are. There's okay, so now we have all these um, components here. It's, um, it's really handy when you have a composition. So uh, we call it lift gas. And then when everything is okay, that it's uh, it adopted the number of moles add up to 100 and then I press create. And um, so then as it is asked in the course, um, we need to add water to the system. So when the lift gas is active, I go to edit composition, edit fluid, then my fluid uh, is now here. I can change any, any more fraction, any percentage, everything, or I can add or remove any components. But here I just want to add water. So it adds to 200,000 ppm of water, which is equivalent to 0 0.2 uh, mole fraction of water. And then I just change the name to plus lift gas plus water. And then I press create new. Yeah, sure. Um, the reason we are doing this is because the uh, gas is being 
reduced from that high pressure reservoir. And in, in the reservoir, the gas is in uh, equilibrium with yes, uh, formation water. So we want, and we know the uh, composition of formation water, 245,000 ppm uh, salt. Um, so we want to see how much water come from the gas, because the, at the reservoir condition, you have gas and formation water in its equilibrium, and there is some water in the gas phase. So when we are producing the gas, we inevitably we produce some water. But obviously that water doesn't take the salt. Salt, but has an effect on the amount of water going to gas phase. In fact, the amount of water going to gas phase is directly related to temperature. The higher the temperature, higher the amount of water. Indirectly related to pressure. The, the lower the pressure, more water comes to gas. Directly, you know, depend on the composition. If you have heavy component, you would have more gas coming to or, or polar component like H2S, CO2, you have more water. And the other factor is uh, basically the salinity of the um, water. So these uh, four factors impact the, uh, the amount of water coming with gas at, at equilibrium to surface. The amount of water can be higher than this because some of the water may come as uh, droplets, as mist. And that's why you don't have, you never have completely condensed water. You have some salinity, even this majority of the water is condensed. Okay, thank you. Um, um, after the gas, uh, so the, the, the fourth step is that after the least gas and water composition was safe, proceeded composition and add take um, any value to the composition. So again, I go to hydroflash and then I the, the lift gas plus water is now active. So I press edit fluid and I go here to polar components and add take to the system. Equimolar doesn't really matter. And I, uh, I change the name to lift gas plus take and I press create new. And then, um, so, the, the, the first step is actually um, to know how much we need take to prevent um, to prevent hydro formation in the ring pipeline. So what, what we are about to do is that we calculate the minimum amount of mi minimum concentration of take in the aqueous phase in equilibrium with gas to work safely outside of the hydrate phase boundary, or to, to know exactly how much tag we need to be on the hydrate dissociation line. So I add a tag to the system and then navigate to calculation tab on the ribbon bar and select um, inhibitor optimization, uh, input the calculation parameters as the snapshot below. Uh, so I go to hydroflash, calculation, we change the uh, name of the module to THR requirements. Uh, so I, I choose the uh, lift gas plus tag. I leave this, uh, the units to centigrade and bar. Hydrate structure detection is uh, automatic. Uh, I can explain what is hydrate structure detection mode. Um, and I change the select inhibitor, I change it to tag. Inhibitor quality, we assume that it's complete, it's pure tag. I leave the production as none. 
water rate and WGR they are deactivated and the safety margin is zero because we want to know exactly how much take would be in the system uh, to, to actually adjust the hydrate phase boundary on the working um, condition. And the uh, uh, take concentration and the um, ring pipeline concentration is 20 degree as 130 bar. So 20 degree and 130 bar. And uh, I press run. So, so as I mentioned, the, the calculations results are being shown in this section. And uh, so it tells us the temperature safety margin considered is zero. Stable hydrate structure is structure two. Hydrate dissociation pressure is 130. And the required THR weight percent in the accuracy speed should be around uh, 18 weight percent. So, and this is the composition of the, of the fluid and the hydrate composition and the, so everything, other information about the fluids, other properties are being shown here. So we need at least 18% of tech to, so that the hydrate phase boundary would be at 20 degrees and 130 bar. So we know that for now, and then, um, Press edit the next step is press edit composition and add 18% of take to the system and then uh, calculate the hydrate phase boundary of the system uh, and then compare the results. So what I'm going to do is that um, I go to fluid management, I press edit fluids and uh, I change the take concentration to 18.35 then the water would be 72, 71, uh, no, sorry, uh, 81.65, and then add up, yes. And then I just change the name to 18 weight percent take. And then I press create new, and I go to calculation tab, and I choose hydro dissociation. Um, so let me between uh, five to 100 bar with five degrees. So uh, I want everything to be the same as um, the course problem document, five bar. And then I uh, compare it with uh, leaf gas and only water. They ask if, if I want to add uh, uh, the, this second graph to this graph as well. I press yes. If I press no, another tab will be opened and then the graph will be shown in another tab. But because I want to compare these two hydrate lines, uh, then I press yes shows this to hydrate line. As you can see, TEG has moved the hydrate dissociation line to the left hand side of the PT diagram. Now I want to add um, the operation conditions and see actually where we are, um, you know, with respect to, to, to the uh, operation condition and hydrate stability zone. So first I add, um, Ring pipeline conditions, which is 20 degrees and 130 bar. You see, um, this. Uh, you, if you remember, in the THR requirement um, calculations, we, we calculated the minimum amount of inhibitor um, that we need to have in the system, that so that the uh, operation con the ring operation condition be exactly on the hydrate. Uh, stability. So we uh, assume the uh, safety margin is zero. So the, the point, the operation condition is exactly on the uh, high phase boundary. And then um, I just add uh, the condition as the wellhead separator, which is 30 degree and 130 bar. 30 degree and 130 bar. 
as you can see, we are uh, completely outside of the high phase, phase boundary for both when the least gas um, uh, is is um, is only in equilibrium with water, or we have some take uh, in the system as well. But for the wellhead separator conditions, we are completely outside of the high stability zone, and uh, at ring pipeline with 18% of take in the system, we are actually on the high phase boundary zone. So. Let's go um, and um, see the next steps. Here, so obviously Ramin has calculated how much peg we require to avoid hydrate at 20 degrees Celsius and 100 pecky bar. We know the amount of peg we have available. That is the 15 liter per million standard cubic feet. So now to make to basically to calculate how much peg would be there with 15 liter per million salary cubic feet, we need to calculate how much water come to surface. As I mentioned earlier, the, um, the water is in equilibrium, the formation water is in equilibrium with the gas. So some uh, water will dissolve in, in the gas as we produce gas and uh, water come to surface uh, initially as uh, gas in the reservoir condition, in the form of gas. But when it comes to surface, um, pressure drops, temperature drop. The pressure drop encourage evaporation, temperature drop, encourage condensation. So there is a battle between them. Normally temperature drop will win. So you will have some condensed water. So now we first stage, we need to calculate how much water come to surface um, as uh, liquid water. And then we need to also calculate at um, ring pipeline condition, how much water will remain in the gas flow. The difference is the amount of water condensing. And then we know the amount of water, we know the amount of tag that we can inject. So if we find the, the amount of the percentage of tag in the condensed water. And then we compare this number with the required 18%. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so this is exactly what we are, what we are going to, uh, in the uh, next section. So let's determine the amount of water condensed in the ring pipeline, assuming the gas processing unit is out of service and no, and no wellhead knock is used. So it means that exactly this this diagram here. So we have we have um, so as we have we don't have any upper drum here, and the gas processing unit is not working, and then so the 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 gas which is saturated with water at reservoir condition is coming um, directly to the ring pipeline. So what we want to do is that we want to know how much condensed water we will have in the ring pipeline because the pressure and temperature has been changed um, with respect to the reservoir conditions. So obviously we will have some uh, condensed water and because TEG is injected from here and we will have some condensed water in here, so the concentration of TEG may be different in, in, in this uh, pipeline. So we want to know how much will be the concentration of TEG and how much will be the amount of uh, condensed water. So what we need to do is to calculate the water content of gas in the reservoir conditions. So um, I need to, um, let's go to the, I need to first uh, do a PT flash calculation at reservoir conditions. So what I need to do is um, to um, go lift gas, I activate this one, and then I press edit composition, 
and I add sodium chloride uh, is 24.5 weight percent because um, it's uh, the ppm, so it will be 75.5. Yeah, and then I change the name to lift gas plus brine. I press create new, and then I go to calculation tab and select PT flash. See, as you change the calculation modules or PHR recommend, this, 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 the, the options in this uh, panel will change. Um, so whichever um, calculation module you, you use, this uh, panel will, uh, will show you the um, uh, corresponding features and options for that calculation. So let's go back to the PT flash. The reservoir conditions is um, 100 degrees and 175 bar. Let me double check. 0.8. Yeah. 8. And I press run. So as you can see here, um, it shows um, in the liquid hydrocarbon section because it's super critical and it's a dense fluid at these conditions. So it shows under this, this column. Um, so the water content of the hydrocarbon phase is um, 0 0.0064. So now let's back to the, uh, get back to the course problem. Um, so now we, we know the water content of the gas, which is 0 0.006404, uh, which is um, 6,404 uh, ppm of water. So uh, we can calculate the amount of, the con the amount of condensed water uh, by this calculation. So seeing that we have 1 million um, standard cubic feet of gas, uh, so we know that um, it, the, uh, the cubic feet uh, at standard conditions, uh, one, uh, the, um, the volume of one uh, pound mole of gas at the standard condition is uh, 380 uh, cubic feet. So we, uh, at, at this section, we know the number of moles of gas at the standard conditions. And uh, this is the water inside the gas. So this, is, this gives uh, this section gives us the number of moles of gas. And when, they, when we multiply it by the molecular weight of water, it gives us the, uh, the, the, the weight of the water, the amount of water we have uh, in, the, um, in the ring pipeline. So therefore, um, each uh, million uh, standard cubic feet uh, of gas has 303 point of water. I.e., the water content of the gas is is uh, three hundred and three point per million standard cubic feet. Uh, when when it comes actually from the reservoir. Sorry, I said uh, ring conditions. Mm -hmm. Likewise, at the rig pipeline condition, perform a PT flash at twenty bar and one hundred and thirty bar. So again, I calculate the water content of gas coming from the reservoir fluid at um, at reservoir conditions. Now I want to uh, do exactly the same calculation at ring uh, pipeline conditions. Uh, so what I need to do is to perform uh, a PT flash calculation at 20 degrees and 130 bar. Just, yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, you see it now. Go to this. Yeah. Here, as Ramin mentioned, we have, obviously, we have formation water. So we put, uh, you know, a number 0.2, it can be any number because it doesn't matter really, as long as you have free water phase and you have the concentration of the sodium chloride. So you know the salt concentration and we do a flash here. And then this will give us the gas composition. You see that the gas will take some water from reservoir. And that water, in, it is represented as mole percent. And now, depend on the unit. Here, we want to use the field unit. In field unit, um, one um, pound mole, 
So we have one pound more gas. One pound more gas, the volume of one pound more gas is 380 cubic feet per pound more gas. But the unit of calculation, we normally report the gas volume in million cubic feet. So here we know that we in, in 380 cubic feet, we have this much water. How much water we will have in one million cubic feet? And that's in the calculation here. So this one no, here. So one million, this is the amount of water we have, but in moles. Yeah, so this amount of water coming up from reservoir in the gas phase in mole. Multiplied by mass of water become weight. Yeah, because we are working in, in the field unit, so mass is pound per pound mole. So this is the amount of water coming to surface. But how much will remain in the gas phase depends on the ring pipeline condition. And the difference is the amount of water that comes. Okay. So um, I, I, I perform, as, as Bahman explained, I perform another PD flash calculation at ring pipeline conditions to actually obtain how much uh, of water remains in the gas phase. I just um, changed this to 20 and 130 bar. Obviously, now we don't have any salt. We need to remove yeah. the salt. Because the water yeah. coming to the surface Has doesn't been. have the salt. So, yeah. See, it's um, around 0 0.00. 337, which is uh, which is around 337 ppm of, of gas. That, that is the water content of gas in equilibrium with condensed water at this condition. So uh, again, using the, um, the the same formula, which one pound mole of, of, of gas has um, 380 cubic feet. So if we have, we have 1 million of cubic feet, so divided by this, that would be, um, and multiply by the mole fraction of water inside the gas phase, we have the number of moles of, of uh, water in one million cubic feet of gas. Then if we multiply this, this value by uh, the molecular weight of water, then we have the, uh, the, the actual mass of water, which is 16 pound. So as you can see, when water is coming from the reservoir, it has 303 pound of water, but now it reduced uh, to 16 pound of water. So that's, that difference is actually the amount of condensed water in the system. So having the water content of gas in the ring pipeline and water content of the gas at reservoir conditions, <clears throat> the amount of condensed water in the pipeline can be obtained using uh, 300, uh, 303 pound uh, per million cubic, uh, standard cubic feet, and minus 16, which would be 287. So uh, the equivalent weight percent of take with this rate of injection is calculated uh, here, um, as uh, using this, this expression below. Um, so it, this is the density of, of take and it is being injected by uh, 15 liter per million standard cubic feet of gas, which uh, is 18 ki uh, kilograms of, of tag. Uh, and then, uh, so we have the pond of, of water would be uh, per, per uh, million uh, standard cubic feet. That would give off, gives us uh, 130 kilogram of water. Um, and then, so we can easily calculate the weight percent of take in the condensed water, which would be 12.2. If you remember from the section A, we calculated the minimum amount of gas 
minimum amount of tag uh, that should be in the system that, that we, we be exactly on the hydrate phase boundary is 18 weight percent. Now you can see that if, uh, if the gas comes um, uh, straight from the reservoir to the, um, to the ring pipeline, the amount of tag, the tag concentration in the, in the ring pipeline will be 12%. As seen, and uh, it, it explains here, as seen, the resulting weight percent of TEC in the aqueous phase by injection of 15 liter per million uh, standard cubic feet rate is less than than optimized to work safely at uh, ring pipeline condition. So what we can do? Well, you can see that the amount of TEC which is available is not even enough to prevent hydrate formation in the ring pipeline. In the ring. So what you do? Okay. The option is that you can have more tech at the moment we don't have, or have less water. But how can you make the, the water condensed water less? And that's Ramin is going yeah. to explain. But well, before that, uh, I just want to ask, do you have any questions um, about um, the explanation calculations here? Okay. So, um, so let's assume that we have an, a, a, a wellhead separator in here that we actually separate water from, from the, the reservoir of fluid and then we inject tag uh, to, uh, to the outlet of the separator. Um, and then calculate uh, how much would be the resulting tech concentration in the rig pipeline. So again, what I need to do is that... Yeah. This is not, in fact, separated. It's a knockout, knockout drum. drum. Yeah, yeah it's a knockout drum. Um, and then we suggested to the client that you can have a knockout drum there. And they said that we eliminated from design saving a lot of money. He said, sorry, you have to put it back. Mm -hmm. um, so now we see the effect of knockout drum in uh, effect <coughs> on the amount of water because the, the wellhead condition the, is at the condition of outside hydration, as Ramin mentioned earlier. So if you have a knockout drum to uh, take the water out, um, we don't have any risk of hydrate. But what will happen is that we reduce the amount of water in the gas. In the gas. Okay. So what I need to do is to perform a PT flash calculation at um, uh, this knockout drum conditions here, which is uh, 30 degree and 130 bar. Again, um, at these conditions, um, I think we need to. I need to use the brine and change it to 30 degree. Uh, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't have something. Knockout drum is still you don't have salt. Salt, so, yeah. Can, um, salt is left in the reservoir. Okay, so, um, so as you can see, we have around uh, 500 ppm, 559 ppm of, of, um, of, of water in the gas phase after the knockout drum. So I repeat the calculation with using this formula, and it gives us uh, this 26.5 pound of water per million standard cubic feet of gas, when gas is, is actually here. And then uh, again, we calculate the pipeline, ring pipeline conditions, the water cut, which would be 16 pounds per million standard cubic feet. So if, uh, if we calculate how much will be the condensed water, it would be 26.5 minus 16, which would be 10.5 pounds of, um, uh, of water per million standard cubic feet. So you see that the amount of water, condensed water, has been reduced, reduced considerably, yeah. So the last time it was 287, now it's 10.5. So if we calculate the tech concentration using this injection rate, uh, it will be 79 weight percent of take in the reed pipeline uh, condition if we separate water uh, in this knockout drum. 
So the and, concern, and yeah. And we only need 18. 18%. 18%. Yeah. So the amount of uh, tech is more than enough to prevent hydrate formation in the ring fiber. So let's um, perform another hydro calculation. Let me close all these. Now the question is that the amount of tag, is it enough to prevent hydrate formation after the choke? Yeah. Okay. So we need to calculate after the choke at minus 5.75 and 60 bar, how much uh, tag we require and whether we have that thing. I'm just calculating the hydrate phase boundary with um, 79 weight percent take. This is the hydrate phase boundary. And again, I compare it with leaf gas and water. Um, and then the ring pipeline and wellhead separator, I then add it again, add them again. So 30 degrees and 130 bar is the wellhead conditions and 20 degree and 120 bar, mm -hmm. 30 bar, yeah. 30 bar, I add these two conditions. So again, uh, as you can see that, um, you know, this is the ring pipeline. With 79, we are far outside of the hydrogen stability zone. Uh, but if we don't have any inhibitors in the system, we will form hydrate because we are inside the hydrogen stability zone when there is no tag in the system. And in the wellhead separator, we are without or with or without tag we won't have any uh, hydrate issue. So, um, okay, so as Bahman uh, um, mentioned, let's calculate how much um, tag we need to work safely after the choke. So if you remember from the PFT here, so after these, these valves, these choke valves, we have the temperature falls uh, to minus, uh, around minus six degrees and 60 bar conditions. So let's calculate actually how much tag we need to work safely at this condition. So what I need to do is that I just repeat what I did for the ring pipeline, but so this time, yeah. Do you want to put the ring pipe, in, sorry, the after choke condition here, minus um, uh, five points. In the THR? No, no, here in the, in the Oh, graph. yes, okay. Minus 5.75. And minus 5.75 and, and 60. 60 bar. Yeah. So it might look that even after choke, we don't have any problem. But you we forgot that after the choke, the temperature is different. Pressure is different. Therefore, the amount of water condensed would be different. Yeah? Uh, yeah. And you need to calculate the amount of tag in that water, in that condensed water. Condensed okay? water will be higher, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, again, I want to calculate how much tag I need uh, in the system to work safely at after choke conditions. So I uh, choose tag here. I assume that it's pure, and I ask for zero safety margin at minus 5.75, uh, was 75, yeah? Yeah, 75 and pressure is 60, and I run the calculation. <clears throat> so it tells us that we, the, the concentration of tech in water should be around 70 or 71, eight percent uh, to work safely at these conditions. So let's get back to the to the uh, calculations here. Um, I just so this is again this hydro calculation using this uh, seventy percent of tag. You will see the results here. This is the condition after the choke. 
This is the hydrate line with 70 weight percentage, ring pipeline conditions, and the wellhead separate. So it means that with 70 degrees, you, you, the, the operation conditions is exactly on the hydrate uh, phase boundary because we, we chose uh, zero uh, safety margin. If I choose two degrees, then the hydrate phase boundary will be two degrees on the left side so that it, the, the operation condition falls on the right, uh, right hand side of the hydrate phase boundary. So to obtain the concentration of take after the choke, perform a PT flash condition at wellhead separator conditions, uh, um, separator condition at the 30 degree and 130 bar, which we did that before. Uh, the water content is, is around 560 ppm. And um, again, doing the same calculation gives us uh, the mass rate of water per uh, million in standard cubic feet of gas, which is 26.5. And we need to, uh, again, perform a PD flash conditions at after um, uh, the, the choke. Uh, we we uh, just, I just need to perform a PD flash condition at minus 7.5.71. And 64. So this is the water content of, of gas. So as you can see, uh, of vapor phase water content as such condition, it, this is 96 ppm. And then performing the, the you know, calculating this, the, the same um, calculation gives us uh, the at at uh, at, uh, at below the, the the ring pipeline conditions. The water rate will be 4.54. Um, um, but this is the amount of water in the gas phase yeah. after the choke. After the choke. Yeah. yeah. So the rest will condense. Which, we, which is 22 pounds per uh, million cubic feet of gas. So again, with 15 liter of uh, with this injection rate of TEG, um, the amount of TEG in the system will be 64 weight percent. Why we need more? Why we need at least 70 degrees, 70, 70. sorry, 78 percent of take in the system. So it's, it's, it's below the, the necessary conditions. So, um, and the reason it is below because we have more condensed water. Yeah. Yeah. We have more condensed water because temperature is low. <coughs> so, and also another issue with such a low temperature tag would be very viscous. So it is not really good advice to take at such a low temperature. Um, because melting point of tag is around that number. So, um, so it is not in a way um, a, a good um, solution. So we need to find a different solution. For, for okay, so yeah. Uh, as I, um, you know, in, uh, in this graph, I calculated the um, hydrate phase boundary of the system when there is 64 weight percent uh, of tag in the system. And as you can see, at, at, uh, after the choke conditions, we are inside the hydrate stability. So we, we, we are actually forming hydrate at this condition. So, so some of the potential solutions would be um, using a lighter inhibitor like methanol or, or potentially make and change the design so that they minimize the JT effect or potential use of kinetic hydrate inhibitors or uh, anti-agglomerants in combination of the thermodynamic inhibitors. Um, so why do you want to ask? Yeah, this is um, basically we concluded that um, the <coughs> amount of um, keg available is not good enough to um, avoid hydrate formation in the after choke condition, even with installation of knockout parameter wellhead. Um, although <clears throat> mixture of take and water can um, you know, protect um, up to around um, minus 45, but it would be very viscous. And in this case is not enough. So the solution um, we look at various solutions, and at the end, we choose a combination of 
kinetic hydrate inhibitor um, and change, slight change in the design and using a lighter hydrate inhibitor. Okay. Uh, so, because this problem had many uh, different steps, so uh, I want to just, you know, go over it um, briefly again. So, this was uh, the gas produced from the reservoir, uh, and then TEG is injected, and, you know, gas processing unit, we are here. So, if this gas processing unit fails, we need some inhibitor in the system to avoid hydrate problem in the ring pipeline conditions. That's why we use TEG because TEG is being used in the gas processing unit. Uh, and then we have some um, choke valves here, and the, these are injected to, um, to a reservoir. Uh, so what we, what we investigated is that um, we calculated uh, the concentration of, of TEG inside the ring pipeline. Uh, we calculated how much is, is the gas is saturated at reservoir conditions, and then the gap, when the gas the condition changed to this to 20 degrees and 130 bar. How much we have condensed uh, condensed water in the system, and with this uh, much inhibitor injection rate, how much is the take concentration, which uh, showed us that we are actually in the hydrate stability zone at the first um, section. Then we suggested that uh, we. Uh, we, uh, we use a knockout drum in here so that we, we, can, we can remove some water from the system. And then uh, we realized that uh, it, you know, by, by doing the same calculation that it was, it, uh, the tag is, uh, is too much, is, uh, um, it's more than enough for preventing hyd uh, hydrate blockage in the reed pipeline. And then, uh, we calculate, we, we investigated if we, have, if we will have any problem in the injection valves here by um, considering the uh, after choke conditions. And we realized that because uh, the condition change here, uh, we will have more condensed water that will uh, dilute the tank and the concentration will be 64 degrees while we needed 70, only uh, at least 70 degrees of tank. Uh, weight percent of tag uh, in the system to uh, to prevent hydrate formation. I uh, remember no separation is perfect. So this condition that we are saying that this is perfect equilibrium. So the amount of water would be higher. So therefore the MEC concentration in reality, in the tech concentration in reality would be lower because we always no separation is perfect. So we would have more okay. water uh, than equilibrium in the gas. In the gas, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is the um, first case study. Do you have any any questions? Was it clear? Okay, um, so do you want a, a break here? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. so we, we, we can have a, a 10 minutes or 15 minutes break, and then we start over um, from case study two after 15 minutes. Yeah. 15 minutes of, of break, uh, so we will be uh, back in 15 minutes. Okay.
Okay. So Vaman is here. Uh, so the second case study is um, is about um, the wet gas is, is is being produced from seven onshore wells, uh, and the wet gas is 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 um, is, uh, is separated um, in a separator. Then the gas would be released and uh, used um, in the utility units and. Um, the liquid uh, outlet, uh, which is hydrocarbon, liquid hydrocarbon and water, they're being injected uh, into the injection valves. The worst case um, the scenarios, the worst case conditions for the injection valves can be um, the separated pressure, which is 65 bar and five degrees. Um, so uh, the thing is that uh, we have seven injection valves. Uh, so we have uh, bought three of these injection pipelines they have hydric blockage problems while the other four injection lines they don't show any signs of gas hydric problems the composition of the fluid for uh, from seven wells are almost identical uh, but the wells produce various quantities of formation water you, you so, want uh, <coughs> a, a bit of background uh, you might be surprised that why they don't separate uh, oil and um, this is a very small reservoir and um, is uh, the operator has decided to uh, use uh, gas for powering turbines to produce electri electricity and export the electricity so the small amount of condensate for them doesn't have much value. So they separate the gas and burn it because it needs um, minimum facilities and then they hook up with the power lines and export the, uh, the electricity. So the, as uh, Rabbit mentioned, we have a simple separa separator and we remove the gas and they basically inject the remaining uh, condensate and and uh, water in the injection okay so we have seven um, wells so we have seven different lines of um, lines two and seven um, separators then um, these separators they inject a separate gas from a liquid hydrocarbon and water and the gas using gas utility, utility units and the liquid hydrocarbon and water condensate and water they are being injected four um uh, sorry three injection wells they have uh, hydro problems but the the other four they don't have any hydro problems so we want to in investigate why why some of them they have hydro problem and why some of them they don't so first of all we, I need to create a composition. Uh, this is the composition I have here. Um, so, uh, and this is the plus fraction properties. So I have them ready in um, this Excel file. And as I shown you before, I just um, copy these um, components into HydroFlash. Um, I should, create another database but because because we are just performing calculations it doesn't really matter I can add it to to the same database uh, I just come here and press um, paste uh, components and mole fraction and I call uh, produce what they say what they asked me to call them um, okay produced fluid produced fluid and then uh, I just need to add the plus fraction which is uh, C11 plus it is a plus fraction starting number is 11 what was the properties again 267 0 0.8 267 0 0.8832 32 and then I calculate the properties and then I add it the composition i just need to change the mole fraction which is um, uh, 
zero point sixteen and two, so they add up to one. Um, so everything looks okay. So I press create. Now we have the fluid here. Now um, I just need to add brine to the system. Uh, so what I need to do is that this this is active. This is something uh, uh, worst wife mentioned, which is that as soon as you create a fluid, uh, it becomes active. And to perform a calculation, you you need to activate a fluid. So you can choose, uh, you want to perform PT flash for which fluid. And as soon as you select, select it, it, it is activated and it becomes activated all over the software. So ev ev any calculation you select, this calculation is active. So if I change it in, for example, bubble pressure, if I change it to lift gas and brine, then I go back to PT flash, it is activated now. So um, this is just something that it's, it's quite handy when, when you are performing calculation for a same composition. Um, so um, I, I perform, um, I just added, um, so this is the produced fluid is, is active now. And then I go to edit composition and uh, uh, this is enough water in the system so that we, may, we can make sure that the system is saturated with brine and with water. And uh, I add sodium chloride. It was mentioned that the concentration of sodium chloride is um, assuming 12 8%. So I change the water to 88. Hi, Ramin. Uh, can I just uh, Hello. interrupt you a bit? Um, why huh? did you think it was hydrate uh, blockage rather than uh, another solid being causing the blockage? Uh, yeah, because <clears throat> it can be another solid, as you say, uh, but um, it's, the system is inside as the calculation goes is uh, will be inside and we, the other solid it can be is the uh, basically wax in condition and uh, we can check for that as well but um, you see that the evidence uh, later on you see that it is hydrated but you are right we could have checked for other solid as well but uh, the what was the name the um, condition here is more like to be hydrated because the, uh, the amount of condensate is very little. Okay, thank you. And the other thing is that, um, you know, the, the problem is that why some injection valves they have hydrate problem and why, why the blockage problem or some of them they don't. If I think if, if it was wax, because the, the, the hydrocarbon phase, the composition, they are the same, wouldn't be really different for different inject, uh, injection valves. But because the produ produced water is different, might be uh, has something to do with water content in the, uh, in the gas phase, in the, in the uh, injection pipelines. So we are investigating that uh, at the moment. Um, so um, I just, uh, uh, okay. Thank you. This. You're welcome. And uh, I added brine. And create new, and I just want to compare it with water, so I add uh, only pure water to the system as well. Water, and um, I just change this one. That doesn't matter what it is. Okay. So um, I calculate. Uh, so because I want to know if we have problem at uh, any conditions we have here. So I want to calculate the um, um, so two hundred bar. Okay. Hydrate line range between one and two hundred is five degrees. So this is the hydrate line. And if I enter um, the separator condition, which is 15 degrees 
and 65 bar, 15 degrees and 65 bar. See that we are outside of the hydrate stability zone, as uh, also you will see in here. We are completely outside of the hydrate phase boundary zone. And then, uh, but we have the problem with uh, when, for the injection valves. And in the in injection valves, we have liquid hydrocarbon and water. So I just need to uh, create a new composition, a new fluid for the injection valves, for the fluid inside the injection valves. So what I need to do is to perform a flash calculation at the, uh, the separator conditions and then make a new fluid out of the uh, liquid hydrocarbon and, and uh, liquid phase, which is the water phase, and then uh, uh, just 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 use that in the hydrate calculations. So I um, go to PT flash. Uh, separate condition was fifteen and sixty-five. Okay, so now I can export it to Excel as mentioned here okay so to export all these data to excel you just press this one you choose a name for the excel file or you give the path we can just type the path here and press save okay so i have the uh, results here so what i think need to do is to add these two phases together and make a single uh, composition. So what I need to do, I assume that I have one mole of feed, then uh, the molar phase fraction of the liquid hydrocarbon phase is the total number of moles of liquid hydrocarbon phase multiply by the mole fraction of each component in this phase. And then I just yeah. And then for the water phase, exactly the same. The molar phase fraction of water multiplied by the mole fraction here. So these are the number of moles of each component uh, in the water phase and in the liquid hydrocarbon phase. Then I just need to add the number of moles of, <coughs> of um, water phase and liquid hydrocarbon phase. Just add the number of moles here, and then uh, I just need to normalize this um, composition. So, sum with the, and then um, so each number of moles divided by this one. Okay. Just need to change it to generals. Okay. So that okay. So that's the composition, the, the total composition in the injection pipeline. So what I need to do is to just create a fluid with this composition. So I uh, I copy these values except for water because water is entered um, in different section. I copy this value and come to hydro flash and go to fluid management because we have all the components already in this fluid so the only mole fraction has been changed so i come here and then i right click on on this column and press paste so now everything is paste and the water mole fraction was this amount so i copy this and then um I here right and because because the salt concentration will be the same so i don't change it and um, i just produced uh or i call it um separated liquid line and i press create new and i just need to calculate um the hydrate phase boundary for for this fluid um, here for this for this stream. Uh, let me show you the this stream. 
and uh, okay so one one is too low okay no it's just like this one okay, five degrees and then one um, I need to okay. Okay, so this is the hydrate line. The the green the 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 green line is the hydrate phase boundary uh, for for this system for the injection valves. See, um, we are um, you know at separate condition. We are still outside of a hydrate phase boundary zone. But what about the worst case conditions, which will be five degrees and sixty five bar pressure. See that we are inside the hydrate phase boundary zone. So the question is, so we should have hydrate problem for all injection valves. So why we have problems with only three of them and why we don't have the blockage or hydrate problem for the other four? So to investigate that, because it was mentioned in the, in the, in the case study description that um, different, th these valves, the composition of the fluid from the fluid valves are almost identical. However, the valves produce various quantities of formation water. So the formation of water will be different. So let's change the, um, the, the, the amount of water for formation water in the system and then perform the hydrate amount calculation. So what I need to do is to first um, let me go to the um, steps here. So we did that. We did that. So what I need to do is to let's produce water across brine and then uh, because the the hydrate phase boundary of produced fluid and also the condensate fluid they are identical so the hydrate uh, amount will be the same so i just need um, to add different amount of formation water to this fluid and um, so i started with um, for example 0 0.05 um, let me double check or 0 0.01, 0 0.001 fraction of the aqueous phase, and I call it 0 0.001, right? And I press um, create new, and then I go to calculation tab, hydrate amount, and then I enter the, um, the conditions of the worst case. Um, scenario okay so this is basically a hydrate flash calculation it gives us the amount of hydrate phase which is this much so this is the molar phase fraction of hydrates and if I repeat that for another um, fraction of the formation water for example let's increase it to the 99 which is too much and then i just change the name 99 0 .99. Create new and then repeat the calculation okay and gives us the molar phase fraction of hydrate is 0 0.017. And if you repeat that for all these water cuts from 0 0.001 to 0 0.99, we have and we record the hydrate phase mole fraction in here. So we see that something is happening there. So we, we put them in a graph to have a better understanding of what is happening. So Look at this, this graph. So these are the results of the calculation. I didn't perform all of them. Um, I just show you two examples. Um, so the, 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 um, the horizontal axis is the water mole fraction in the field, in the feed, which is from zero to one. 
um, from 0.001 or to 0.99, and this is the hydrate amount for. As you can see, with increasing the water mole fraction in the feed, the, the amount of hydrate forms in the system increases. But after um, some some um, um, some some point in the in this in this in this um, axis, the amount of hydrate reduces. So, and we realize that it actually in the in the three pipelines with the blockage, they are they are in these these lines with this formation of water, and then with the pipelines, this condition. Uh, sorry. Um, the pipeline with blocks, we are actually these, these pipelines with this amount of water cut, and the, and the, and the injection lines without any hydrate blockage are, are um, these, these formation. So what this, this graph tells us is actually the, because in, in these three pipelines um, that we don't have a, a hydrate blockage, the amount of hydrate form is very little, it's very small. While for these four that we have hydrate blockage problem, uh, the amount of hydrate form is, is actually high. So, so that's why, because they inject the, the produced wells, they, they, the, the different water formation costs are being produced in different wells, uh, that will result in different amount of hydrate uh, uh, in, in the system. So, so that's why, um, in four injection line injection um, pipes, we have hydrate problems because we have too much of hydrates, and these when, when we have too much of hydrates in the system, so these hydrates they, they, they can actually stuck together and then uh, uh, cause blockage, but the flow can can actually continue when the amount of hydrate forms in the system is actually very low. So what what also this this graph tells us is that when when you have more water. And then you have more available water in the system to form hydrate. But after a certain percentage of water, then you will have less hydrate former, like methane, ethane, proper in the system to form hydrate. That's where this decline is being observed. So that means that after a certain water cut in the system, the amount of hydrate forms reduce because you have less hydrate formers in the system. So that's why this shape is being um, seen when, when, when um, hydrate amount calculation is being performed for different um, water cuts. So, um, Ramin, yeah, um, yeah. sorry um, to interrupt you. Um, you said um, there's a tipping point um, in which uh, increasing water doesn't lead to increasing hydrate formation. Um, does that, are you referring to um, all the, I don't know, um, C3 being consumed, so there's no more C3 for hydrate um, formation? In this, in this section, yes. It is not just C3. <laughs> you know, in hydrate, you have is a reaction. It's a physical reaction. You, you need water and you need hydrate forming <coughs> gas, or hydrate forming components. If you have limited, if you have a lot of water, yeah, you have limited um, hydrocarbon. So hydrocarbon is a limiting factor that determines the amount of hydrate form in the system. If you have too little water, then the water determines. Obviously, here is not only the water, but the salinity of water, because um, you know, as hydrate form, salt concentration increases and will inhibit the system. And in extreme condition, you might end up with a salt blockage. Yeah? So it's a reaction. So the amount of hydrate depends on um, how much water, how much hydrocarbon you have. And the cases, that you had too much water, you have very little hydrocarbon, the amount of hydrate is very little, so it doesn't block. If you had too much um, hydrocarbon and limited water, then the water is limited. Yeah. So the, the, uh, the point was that we told the client that, you know, this is the reason. And in future, 
some of this wealth, for example, um, the B, the, the well B, would have hydrate problem in future because the water mm -hmm. is going to increase. The well F, it probably will go out of hydrate. Yeah, because the amount of water, we expect the water um, will uh, increase. So that was the reason. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, um, any any uh, questions about this calculation? So the problem was that um, we had this production um, wells with different formation water cuts, and then uh, the, the the gas is being separated, liquid hydrocarbon and water being separated from the gas. They are being injected to another well. And um, but some of the injection uh, pipelines they had hydrate blockage problem and some of them they didn't. We wanted to investigate what what is the cause of this issue. Uh, so by calculating the hydrate phase boundary of the system, we realized that all the injection pipelines they should be uh, they they are actually in the hydrate stability zone and they should have the hydrate blockage uh, problem, but. Uh, to investigate why some of them they don't have that, we calculate the amount of hydrate uh, hydrates present in the system with um, if with different formation water cuts in the injection pipelines, and then we realize that um, when when the valves when the hydrates are uh, the hydrate amount in the injection pipelines are are very small, we don't have hydrate problems, but when they are high, when, when the amount of hydrate is, is higher, then they can block the pipeline. And that is because, because uh, sometimes the, the forming hydro, uh, liquid hydrocarbons, hydrate um, former hydrocarbons is the limiting factor and sometimes water is the limiting factor. So, uh, so for example, for, for, well, uh, for injection pipeline A and B, uh, we don't have, we have very little amount of water here. We don't have hydrate problem, but also for um, well injection um, pipeline G, we have a lot of water, but still we don't have a hydrate problem because we have less uh, hydrocarbon formers in the system. But for, with other ones that the amount of hydrate is very high, we have hydrate blockage problem. So um, any more questions? Excuse me. Yeah, sure. Uh, would you uh, please show us uh, the amount of hydrate uh, from your calculation uh, using the software? Yeah. For the example, would you please? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I, I just did, did, did that. Um, it's, um, for example, um, I, I created this, this fluid with, um, as you can see, the formation of water card is 99%. And I name it 99, 0.99 brine. And then uh, for performing the hydrate amount calculation, I uh, came here and I select this one, this hydrate amount. And then I enter the conditions of the injection pipeline, which is five degree and 65 degree. And I press run. Okay, so this gives us uh, all the, the, the amount of hydrate formed in the system at this condition. So as you can see, is the hydrate weight percent uh, with respect to the total feed is around 1.5%, and the water weight percent converted to hydrates is, uh, is actually, because not all the water in the system goes to the hydrates, some a portion of the refraction of it goes to the hydrate weight. And the water weight percent con con converted to hydrate is 1.3% um, percent weight percent. And in this, in this section, so you see, you, 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 ha you see the, uh, the composition of all phases. Because the stable structure is a structure two, so it's being shown under the structure two. So this is the composition in the hydrate phase the mole fraction of all these hydrate formers in the hydrate, uh, in the structure two of hydrates, 
and the liquid hydrocarbon and water phase composition. And the molar phase fraction, which is actually we use in here, hydrate phase or in this graph, which are molar, hydrate molar phase fractions are being shown in this, in this row, which is for hydrate is this one. Did I uh, answer your question? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, you're um, so you don't want to add anything else? No. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's go to the um, third and last. Um, do you want to check if they need any more? Yes. Um, uh, do, 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 do we need um, um, uh, another break? Or, or, or you're okay. Or you're okay. You can just unmute yourself or can write for me. I think 10 minutes is okay. Okay, okay. okay. All engineers, engineers, people are tough people. <laughs> you can't make them look tired. Tired, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, so the excuse me as you best. I'm sorry. Excuse me as you best. Yeah. Listen, me, I think uh, ten minutes is okay. So you need ten minutes. Yes. Okay, okay, so, uh, okay, so we will come back in 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, so you have um, your time to get a coffee or something. Coffee or something, okay, and then we will start on case study three. Um, I hope everyone is back. Um, so, okay. So, shall we start? Yes? No. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Right. Um, so, the, the third case study um, is about um, an onshore natural gas production facility in Colombia is experiencing gas hydrate problems. Gas is produced and initially separated in two parallel separators operating at 120 Fahrenheit and 1900 PSI. Uh, glyco is uh, being injected to the gas before being cooled in a um, heat exchanger. And, uh, and then gas is, is, is then dried in a low pressure separator. And then uh, after a coalescer, um, the, the, the uh, outlet of the coalescer goes to the uh, high pressure side of the heat exchanger and um, so the, the so the, the process is uh, is then continued by um, injecting more gas and then uh, the gas is, is being cooled here uh, so the problem is that uh, the plant operator experience high problem in both sides of the gas gas heat exchanger um, the living gas, uh, the, the living uh, low pressure separator is saturated water at about two to, to three pounds per million external cubic feet. And the plant was uh, originally uh, designed for methanol injection, but uh, methanol is, uh, is unavailable for operation 
and now uh, MEG is being injected to the low pressure side of the heat exchanger. So they want to investigate uh, why they have a um, hydrate problem um, for, uh, at this low pressure side of the, of the heat exchanger. So, Bama, do you want to, to add any explanation for this problem or? Um... Okay, okay. So, what I need to do uh, is first um, calculate, uh, if just first uh, add the composition to the system and then uh, just see where we are in the PT diagram in the, our operation conditions. So, um, I um, just need to close this one, do not save, and then third case study, you have the composition here. Um, Create a new fluid. Yes. In, um, I call it fluid. And then, so the plus fraction is C7 plus. Um, do you want to add some comment on that? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, this is a <clears throat> gas processing. Um, um, unit. Um, these are package. You know what I mean. They, normally, they have a certain packages, a certain flow rate, and normally um, they don't need a lot of designing. Um, and normally, methanol is used here. But um, in Colombia, methanol is used for drug processing. So government has banned um, methanol. So they said, okay, if we can't use methanol, we can use glycol. So they calculated how much glycol. Obviously glycol is less effective. So they calculated how much glycol they require and then replace methanol with glycol and they were assuming that it would work fine, but they had blockage. And um, <clears throat> now Ramin explained um, yes. why they have blockage. Okay. Okay. So um, I just need to um, add um, the plus fraction is 193. Is y ninety three is the mole mole growth rate of the plus fraction, and then eighty three forty seven, and then uh, I just need to add the mole fraction, which is uh, zero point zero zero three. If I'm not wrong, yeah. Oh, sorry. Right. Uh, so this is the fluid, and then I add um, some water, and then I add water and make uh, to the system. But um, just need to add water first. Plus water, press create new, and then, okay. So it uh, says that uh, MEG is being injected 20 barrel per day in this, um, in this gas stream, which is 45 million stone cubic feet per day. So um, I would just want to calculate the MEG concentration in the system by when they are mixed in, in here. So the calculation is, is here. So again, um, one pound mole of, of, uh, of gas is um, 380 cubic uh, feet. And then with 1 million standard cubic feet, we will have this number of mole of gas, which the mole fraction of water is this. So this is the number of mole of water multiplied by mole kilobit of water gives us the water flow rate. And then um, the you know, converting the water flow rate from pound 
to kilo, uh, kilogram per, per day with um, 1348 um, kilogram per day. And then when, when MEG is uh, being injected by 20 barrel per day injection rate, uh, it will be give us, um, after the converting the units, it will give us uh, the 3618 uh, kilogram per day. And therefore, the, the weight percent of MEG in the pipeline in the, would be 73 uh, degrees. So what I need to do is that I already added water to the system. I just need to add 73% um, MEG. Seventy-three twenty-seven. I change the name to make yes. Create new, and then um, I just need to calculate the hydrate phase boundary of the system. Um, so what I need to do is to go to the calculation tab, press hydrate dissociation from. Um, five bar to three hundred bar. Eight percent here. Eight seventy three. So, 500 to, okay. to change it to PSIA, 500 to 2,500 PSI by changing uh, 100 PSI. So this is the hydrate phase boundary when we have um, 73 um, weight percent uh, make. And I just add pure water. So this is the hydrate phase boundary when only pure water present in the system. And when we add 70 uh, weight percent make, the hydrate phase boundary moves to the left hand side of the, of the hydrate phase boundary. Uh, oh, the temperature is still. Um, um, centigrade, so I need to change it to Fahrenheit. Yes, uh, so I changed the unit to Fahrenheit now. And then, so let's see where we are in the PT diagram uh, with the uh, operation conditions. So uh, the operation conditions of the inlet separator is uh, 120 Fahrenheit. And 1900 PSI. So as you can see, we are far from the hydrate stability zone, but with a um, low pressure um, separator, low temperature separator, we have um, a minus 10 Fahrenheit and 1200 PSI. As you can see, uh, we are still outside of the hydrate phase boundary zone, even with this uh, MEG injection. So we shouldn't have hydrate problem, but they are experiencing hydrate problem. So what I need to do is to, <clears throat> because when the gas is coming here and then separated, then the, the, some of the MEG, because MEG, MEG uh, is is less volatile than methanol, so the concentration of MEG uh, is 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 very low compared to methanol is is low in the vapor phase. So when it comes here and then goes here, so let's let's just just calculate how much MEG we will have in the vapor stream when 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 the um the the gas the gas is being actually go to the shell side of the heat exchanger. So uh, what I need to do is just to perform a PT flash calculation at, uh, at a low temperature separator. Let 
make and then calculation tab pt flash minus 10 and 1 1200 psi so this is the results of the pt flash calculation and so i just need to um create a new composition out of the vapor uh, phase. So I just need to export this to Excel so that I can um, do the calculation. Okay. So, okay, so we have um, the compositions here, but because I need to separate MEG and water and add them in a different section in the composition, so I just need to calculate how much will be the total number of moles of uh, the accuracy feed will be because this, this is this is normalized so it will be a mole fraction so it will be sum of uh, make and water mole fractions and then i just need to calculate how much will be the concentration of make in the system by dividing this this and then uh, dividing water mole fraction to the total accuse phase and let me change them to percentage so as you can see um only 0 0.15 um molar percent in the vapor phase is, uh, is actually made so i just make a new composition I just let me copy the vapor mole fractions here It's uh, composition vapor plus mag. <clears throat> and then uh, the total number of uh, accuracy speed will be this one. And then uh, have 0 0.15. The, the relative mode of, of MEG and then 99.85 for water. And then I press create new. And then I, as it is asked, I need to calculate the hybrid phase boundary of the system for, for this uh, composition. So I Nine from five hundred to twenty five hundred psi with hundred psi incremental steps. So this is the height of phase boundary. And because again, the height of phase boundary it shows a retrograde behavior because there was just very small amount of uh, water in the system. So um, the, the, the system tends, to, the height tends to form at lower temperatures because uh, water becomes a limiting uh, component for height formation. And I just need to add a low temperature separator conditions to this graph which is minus 10 and 1200. So as you can see in this graph or, or in the, in the um, document you have, we are still outside of the high dead phase boundary zone. So what is actually happening? So why we have problem? Um, so the operation conditions of the LT separator as has as been written in the document are outside the high dead phase boundary of the system. Although uh, the content of evaporated MEG in the vapor phase is very small, but on the other hand, the available water for, for hydrate formation is also limited. So it is suggested that the hydrate problem persists because the possible reasons below. So MEG is not properly distributed in the system. In other words, due to low vapor pressure, the concentration of MEG in the vapor phase is not enough to prevent hydrate formation. Therefore, MEG needs efficient distribution in the effective, for effective inhibition. So which means that, as, as I explained before, because MEG is, is, is heavier compared to methanol, 
it is not distributed in the, in the, in the whole process. <clears throat> So when, when he, the, the vapor is being evaporized here, the concentration of MEG in the vapor phase is very low. Can I ask some questions? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, here, um, you um, injecting MEG here, okay? And the gas, normally this uh, entering gas goes to tube. And the gas after, after, after uh, export gas goes to the shell. So this is cold and we want to warm it. And this is same gas we want it to be um, uh, warm. And, um, the, um, and this is the gas we wanted to um, cool it, okay? Um, because we want to have LT um, separation. By the way, I think it should be the <coughs> other way. This um, intern should be Con should be current, current. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. should be a hot other yeah. side. Yeah. So the in entry of the gas should be this side, and the exit should be this side. So you uh, gradually warm the, um, uh, cool the gas and warm this. Side. So imagine that you have meg in the vapor phase and meg in the liquid phase. You can imagine that most of the meg in the liquid phase goes to the bottom of the bottom tubes, not the top tubes. Top tubes, they don't have much MEG because there is not enough MEG in the vapor phase. So as the gas goes forward and cool down, yeah, and then water will condense. Water that is in the gas, it will condense. That water doesn't have any MEG to protect Hydrate uh, against hydrate formation. Therefore, hydrate can form and block it. So we have a problem. And the same goes in the uh, shell, shell side. Also. Okay. Because in the shell side, it's actually very low MEG content when it goes to shell side and the water and uh, uh, you know water condensates here or the, the low, very, very low MEG content, then we can still have the Hydrate problem. So other possibilities are, um, let's go further down, is that uh, as Bahman explained, in the HP side of the heat exchanger, either mixing efficiency should be improved or MEG should be injected uh, in, in, the, in, the, um, in the HP side. In the LP side, the heat exchanger and other injection point is required after coalescer. Most likely the reason for the blockage in the LP side of the heat exchanger is leakage from high pressure side. Or a change in inhibitor may need a, a change in design or operation as methanol is a better inhibitor for this case. Because, because this, as Bama said, for this package has been designed for, for, for methanol. And um, so changing methanol with MEG obviously didn't work. Um, so, um, so this is the... Um, Case three. So, um, do you have any any questions? Okay. So uh, this was the the, the 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 you know the the third case. It was um, a gas from a separator was was coming. It was going inside the shell and tube heat exchanger. Then uh, in an LT separator, they um, they make. Uh, has been separated from the from the um, so the gas and then uh, some the condensate of the gas would be separated from the gas and then this this uh, cold gas is being used to to um, to, to to actually uh, you know make the, the reduce the temperature of the inlet gas uh, so they experienced the um, the um, hydrate problem here. So investigated, uh, they, um, because we have two mains um, um, fluids here, one in here and then one here, vapor phase, and also the, the inlet, the feed gas. We investigated the hydrate phase boundary of the system and we calculated that, but for all these um, conditions, we were outside of the hydrate phase boundaries. So uh, it, the, 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 the cause of the hydrate blockage wasn't actually um, the thermodynamic, um, reason it was because it wasn't because the fact that actually the operation conditions are is inside the hydrate stability zone it was it was because of poor distribution 
of the MEG and uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, not uh, uh, not suitable um, replacement for for methanol. MEG is not a good replacement for methanol, and uh, may, maybe a poor distribution of the inhibitor in the whole package. So that was the um, overview of the of the problem. So um, I think um, we are now finished with all these um, case studies. Uh, so um, just just feel free to ask any question if you have, if you have about about uh, any of the case studies case study one two three, and so we are here that we can answer your question or if you have a general question about hydroflash, or um, I don't know any modeling in hydroflash, then then we are happy to um, answer your question here. So either either my explanation was so good because we thought yeah. I had a question. <laughs> See that Ryan, uh, Ryan Ryan did a good job in the explaining, <laughs> so you don't have any question. Um, so um, thank you very much for your attention for joining this uh, training course. Uh, we hope to have another one next week, thirteenth um, of the. 13th of 13th September. Of September yeah. um, so we hope to see you then. In the meantime, if you have any specific case study you want us to investigate, uh, but uh, the condition is that we should have the permission to present it. Um, we'd be more than happy to uh, investigate that case for you and present it to the whole class or the whole group. Um, if you have any question, you know, uh, you can always send email to um, Hydroflash, to Ramin, and uh, we will be happy to hear from you. Okay, so thank you. Yeah, as Bama said, please, um, I mean, we will appreciate your feedback if, if you think, uh, if, we, if we could add, if we, we could uh, actually change the approach in the, um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the presenting of the case studies or uh, if you have any feedbacks, please let us know. I will um, wrap up this recording video and I will send you a link to download. Um, and uh, so please let me know. You, you, I think all of you, you have my email address and also you have, um, you can send an email to, to hydroflash at sign hydrofact.com. So, um, I mean, uh, we, we can be in contact. Um, so, yeah. Hi, right, Ramin. Um, thank you very much, uh, Professor Tohidi. Thank you very much. Um, it was very good thank presentation. You. Thank you. Thank oh, you for pleasure. attending. Pleasure. I, I, I hope you are feeling better now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was, <laughs> yeah, for, yeah. I was, I was really um, sick yesterday. I was off sick yesterday and I just, you know, dragged myself <laughs> to do company today. So it's a, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's that time of the year when everybody catches flu or something. Yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well soon. Yeah, so thank you thank and, you, um, you know, have a, have a lovely day. Thank you, bye. And um, uh, all right, okay, so I think um, this is um, us. Um, so hope you, um, see you in the next courses we are having uh, and um, um, I'm, I'm saying just That's goodbye fine. now. Okay, so thank you very much and um, goodbye for now.